Hey guys, how you doing? Well, uh, I want to thank you for going ahead and uh, tuning in again. Uh, thank you, it means so much to me. Thumbs up. Uh, what I wanted to do is actually show you how I made something on uh, Simplify 3D uh, with the help of a thing I downloaded from Thingiverse. It was, well, this. Okay, no, not the bar of soap. I don't know how to make soap. It's the soap dish. Yes. Uh, the reason why I ended up making it was, honestly, well, I didn't, don't have one. <laughs> All I was doing was just leaving these inside the cardboard box sitting on top of my sink. Very classy, I know. It's extremely classy. So I figured, you know what, why not? Instead of running out and buying a soap dish for a few bucks. I can make this and I think the total cost for the filament that I used on here to make this and also to make another one that I currently have down in the garage um, drying because I clear coated it. Um, I'll, show, I'll show you pictures of that one because that's going to be the one that I'm going to show you on how I made it because that one I made um, on a whim and it includes the RAFC champs, the New England Patriots. So it's a New England Patriot themed soap dish holder that I made in silver and blue. So I'm going to go ahead, get into Fusion 360, uh, and show you guys how I did it. All right, hope you enjoy. All right, hey guys. So what we are going to do here is uh, I am designing <coughs> excuse me a soap dish so what we are going to do here is um, yeah I'm gonna take a a mesh of the soap dish design that I am going to take and let's see here we're gonna do this one I don't think you can see this screen but it's a soap holder that I found on Thingiverse works out really well and I'm just gonna go ahead and modify the file do I want the one that's already got the hexagons in it or just a plain one I'll just do the plain one alright so this is a mesh file you can't uh, we'll just click OK I don't need to move it or resize it or anything now you can't just automatically start working with a mesh inside the Fusion 360 unless you want to go to the uh, boo -boo -boo -boo. do I have it set here? Oh, I don't even have it set here. Um, let's see. I believe it's only preferences. Yeah, if you activate the mesh. Nope, that's not it either. Yeah, well, whatever. Anyways, I'll show you how to edit a mesh like you would any normal model inside Fusion 360. So first things first, you want to go ahead and import your mesh. Next, what you want to do is right click on the active component up here. Do not capture design history. I think I just missed that. There we go. Do not capture design history. Click continue. Now what you're going to want to do is right click on your object and mesh to B rep option right here click OK and there you go now we have a complete editable file I'm gonna go back to right click on the up here at the active component go back to capture design history now the way I like to do it is now we got all these triangles that the mesh is made up out of. I like to just go ahead and delete one of the triangles. That does not um, delete any face or change any of the uh, parameters or size of the model. So that's all I'm going to end up doing. What I decided I am going to make is a Patriots soap dish. So what I want to do next is insert SVG. I've already made the SVGs through um, Adobe Illustrator. 
So we'll open this one first. And I want to work on the face of the mesh. Go ahead and move you over here. Flip you over. Boop. And size you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that'll work. And now we have our met, our uh, SVG on top of the soap dish. Um, I don't even know what you want to call it. What I'm going to do next is delete the border lines that came in when I traced the image. And that's all there is to it. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and select these objects here because I want to make a negative extrude. Doesn't matter what size it is. There. Now we got the Patriots logo. Yay, go Pats, AFC champs yet again. Now what I want to do is I'm going to create a sketch on top of here. I want to add something. I'm going to add some text. So we're going to go AFC. I'm going to change you to 20 millimeter height. And what? Let's go with grilled cheese. I like the way the grilled cheese looks. Now we're going to click OK. Go back to sketch, add some more text, click below it, and let's just go champs. We go size 20, go back to the grilled cheese. Ah, it's making me hungry. Rotate it around, and boom. AFC champs. And we're going to click OK. Now to extrude your lettering, I'm going to go and control click on your group, lettering groups, right click. Oh wait, I can't do that. i got to do one at a time, sorry. <laughs> Alright, one at a time, explode text. Right click, explode text. What the explode text does, it'll go ahead and allow you to make extrusions now. You'll be able to select each letter and make the extrusion the same way I just did with the Patriots logo. So go here. Nope, I don't want to click on the corner. Click on the letters and extrude. Extrude cut. And now we have AFC Champs. Dun da da da! Oh, what else to do? Do I want to add a football? Yeah, let's add a football. We'll go insert SVG again. Go to the location where your SVG file is saved. Click OK. I'm going to put it back on the face and we are going to rotate now this svg came kind of messed up i'll admit it was my fault when i traced it it came with a double tra it ended up coming with a double trace on it you'll see what i mean in a minute i believe it was the shadow but i really couldn't tell that there was a shadow with it All right, so that looks good. We'll leave that right there. Now for this, we're going to end up doing the same thing we did with the Patriots logo. We are going to delete the lines. And here's where the, you can see where I've got double lines going on here. 
And this is where the tedious part comes in on deleting those lines. As you pretty much have to figure out what lines you have to delete that isn't going to break your object. And what I mean by breaking the object is you see if I move my mouse cursor over here, this area lights up. If I move my mouse cursor over here, only this area lights up. So that means the uh, images, these two, I'll call them separate images for this purpose, are, well, separated. There is one particular line, because I did this once already, but there is one particular line here that when you finally delete it to get rid of the um, shadow lines, it will break the image and you'll have to draw a new line, which isn't a big deal. And just go ahead and I recommend, it may be a little tedious, but I'll just recommend deleting one line at a time. And you'll know when you break your image because everything, especially zoomed in like this, your whole screen will turn blue. So all you're going to end up doing once you do that is just control Z, back out and see if there is a way you can let's see which line you can delete without breaking the image. Let's see, I'm going to want that one. So now I want the inside line here, inside line there. No, not that one. Let's go ahead and start group selecting this stuff. I believe this is the one that's going to cause it to break. No, that one isn't. I know one of these will cause it to break on this side, whereas the other side was perfect. Oh, this is the one where it's going to break. All right. Because I'm going to end up deleting this, which is linked to this side. But if I delete this inside line, it is also linked to this side. So it'll just end up breaking. I know it's going to break, so we'll just go ahead and continue with the group selection. I don't know which one to do. Um, I don't like the way the outside one looks anyway, so we'll delete the outside line on that one. Nope, oh, see that one's going to cause it to break right there, so I don't want too many spots. But actually, that's fine. Because that one's connected up there. Alright, well let's delete those right now. Oh, that didn't break the image. I thought that was the one that broke the image. And zoom out real quick. Well, all the single lines are still there. Or is it this one? Okay, I believe it's this one right here that breaks the image, but I just said that, so who knows. Alright, um, which lines to delete? Let's go with the inside ones here. Okay, yeah, that was a good choice. You know, it's like a guessing game. Alright, let's see. Oh, oh, that one worked too. Would you know, would you look at that? I must have deleted the wrong line last time. And I just got frustrated and redrew the line with a uh, spline. So if you do end up getting frustrated and just deleting it, you can remake these curves with a spline. Make a point on one side here, one point up here, one point over here, and one point over here connecting it. So it's four points, and with those four, 
two points up here that are movable, you'll be able to create recreate the arc. Right, get rid of you now. Let's go with you. Uh, nope, I don't want that one. All right, that's fine. Uh, we'll go with you. That one worked. That one worked. Who knows? Hey, maybe I might not be able to break this image after all this time. It is a little tedious. That's why I do recommend just deleting the lines one at a time. That way, if your image does break, you'll know exactly um, which line it was. And with a shadow line like this, you just go ahead and hit Control Z to undo that delete and just delete the line that's right next to it. Otherwise, for the most part, the other lines in this particular model are pretty self-explanatory on which ones that you need to delete. Is that all of them? I think that might be all of the lines. All right. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we are going to extrude you extrude cut I should say sorry boom alright now we do have a bunch of open space and free floaters don't worry about that because I mean one it's only going to be a soap dish so it doesn't have to your connecting your connections don't have to be like 100% beautiful. So what we're going to do on this side is we're going to press pull. Nope, that one's not going to work, huh? Oh, well, because there's a radius there. All right, cancel that. All right, so that one, those will be easy enough just to do a... All right, so now we've... Ah, uh, damn it, I hate doing that. Rotate you this way. There we go. Alright, so now we've basically got the soap dish strainer. Strainer, that's it. Uh, done. So now we're going to have to connect all of these little free floaters to the main plate so that obviously you can't you can print them in open space, but they're not going to work because they're just going to stay on the build plate when you take this off. So because my idea of the extrude, I didn't get this far in my prototype. <laughs> my idea of the extrude didn't work for the football design, which is too bad. Oh, wow. What? Whoa. I am making myself dizzy. All right. Which is too bad. I want, really wanted just to drag this out. Yeah. All right. That's not going to work. So go top, rotate you. So now what I'm going to want to do is work the bottom. Actually, let's work this. Yeah, whatever. We'll work the bottom because now we're going to create a new sketch. We're going to actually create a sketch. Let's highlight the origin, actually. There's my origin. There it is. Create a sketch using the bottom. I know everything is upside down, but. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is create a three point rectangle. One point, two point, three point. One point, two point, three point. This one will be a narrow one. Whoops. 
this one's going to be another narrow one. I'll make these ones a little bit wider. And all these are going to do is just going to patch our let's see, free floating pieces together. Yeah, that'll work. And now for you. Let's see, actually, it's kind of bugging me. Let's go this way at least. All right. Let's see. Let's go with some smaller ones because I don't want to take away too much of the detail of the actual logo. when you're doing something like this it's pretty inevitable that you're going to have to make connection points and let's go let's back you up one go back to rectangle three point rectangle there connect one yeah yeah let's connect one to the face so we'll make you 0.5 damn that one's gonna be overshooting the edge of the star Let's move you. Like that. Yeah, that works. All right, so now that we have created all of our connecting points, let's flip this thing around again. Boom. Boom and rotate. All right, so now we have all our connection points done. We are gonna extrude all of our rectangles that we drew. Let's go ahead and we'll hide the origin and hide our bodies right now. Let's select all of our rectangles that we drew. Going to re-highlight our bodies click on one of the rectangles and we're going to click extrude and we are going to join now where's my extrude arrow oh I screwed that one up alright would you look at that I screwed all this up I meant to draw it on the back of the plane and I actually drew it on the origin. Son of a gun. Alright, well let's cancel this for a minute. Uh, it's oh yeah. <laughs> I never paid attention to that before. Oh, so that's an example of what not to do. Um, let's just go ahead and select all the bodies and we're going to move the bodies all right
right. Oh, it's not going to let me do that because I'm still in the sketch. All right, stop sketch. Now let's go to bodies. Excuse me, there is a message for you. Move all the bodies. Ah, okay, there we go. Now we're just going to grab the Z arrow and move it right down to the origin. And okay so now we're flat on the origin all of our rectangles are still lined up and they are on the back side of the uh, soap strainer so if you're gonna do something like that either work directly on the object that you have created or um, well, like, like you saw, it was just a quick, simple fix, only moving one axis and yeah. All right. So we'll go back to doing what we just did. We're going to go select all of our rectangles. I mean, hide the bodies, select the rank rectangles. We're going to now right click the bodies, click extrude. get kind of an angle view here and we want to extrude two millimeters should give I believe the whole body is only three yeah it's only about three millimeters thick so we'll go 1.5 we'll do half that 1.5 we're going to join And click OK. Now it'll process, and now everything is joined. We've got nothing that is now. We have nothing that is um, loose. As you can see, everything now is one body, so everything is connected. Uh, let's see, we should add a little bit more of a, ouch, hit myself, should add a little bit more of a design in here, so let's see, what would be a decent design to act with? Uh, I guess we just go and let's just go with a regular circle. Circles look good. And yeah, we'll just do that. Start here. That should look pretty good. A ten millimeter circle. I'll do a six millimeter circle. Yeah, let's just make them all different sizes. Eight millimeter circle. Fifteen millimeter circle, eight millimeter circle. There. The reason why I went to circles. This is supposed to act as a strainer. You don't want soap getting all bugged up on it, even though it is only soap.
That one just happened to work out perfectly at 10. Oh, okay, that one works too. Why not? Let's make a two millimeter circle there. Four millimeter circle there. Six millimeter circle there. Oh, that should be good. Let's do another four millimeter there. And we'll do one more four millimeter here. All right. Let's go ahead and extrude, cut. No, not the center point. Ex all these circles now. Uh, not the center point. I want the whole circle. Mm -hmm. Zoom in for that one. And we're going to extrude cuts. Boom. AFC champs. Dun da da da. Eh, that doesn't look too bad. Eh, I think that might be acceptable. All right, so let's see. Yeah, that's what I thought about that. All right, so we'll leave this as is. We'll go to make 3D print. We're gonna select this whole thing. Do I want Simplify 3D or just want to send it? I mean, do I want to mesh mix it, STL? Or send it straight to the slicer? Now let's go to the mesh mixer. Load it to mesh mixer. If I can talk right, mesh mixer. I know you can't see that on the screen, but let's see. Do you want to run an update right now? Not now. I'll export it as the STL. Um, let's just throw it into the desktop. Let's go Pat's Soap Dish Drainer. Save. Exit out. And we'll go ahead and get it into our slicer, which I'm going to be using the um, slicer Prusa edition. So I'm going to go ahead and send it to my uh, Mark II S. And I'll go ahead and get the time lapse of that going for you. So hope you guys enjoy.
So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I really, uh, yeah, no, this is kind of what I want to do now. And so look forward to more uh, videos coming up. I've got plenty of projects in my head and it's just trying to get them, you know, on paper and in the computer and then on a printer. I've got a couple things that I have that I'm going to kind of tweak out a little bit. Like for my Prusa uh, Mark IIs I have. Uh, downloaded a thing from Thingiverse as well. And it's LCD Relocator. So it took the LCD screen from the front and put it onto the top. And what I did was because of lack of space right now on where my printer currently is. With that thing from Thingiverse, I went ahead and imported it into Fusion 360, unmeshed it, combined a spool holder, and then custom made a spool holder um, supports. And I made three of them actually. So that, because two of them hold the LCD screen, one of them is just, it's a copy of the other ones, it's just off to the other side, so there's three of those on top of my machine, and I can actually hold the LCD screen, and above it I can hold a spool of reel, and to the right side I can hold a spool of reel, and depending on the size of the reels, you can actually hold up to three spools of uh, filament on top of the machine. And I kind of like that idea just because of, you know, like I said, I've got a lack of space right now. I am going to be making a maker's space that's going to be down in the basement. I'm going to head and shoot video and give you pictures and stuff of that see, uh, so you can see the progress for that. And like I said, that spool holder can hold up to three rolls of filament on the top, depending on how wide the rolls of filament are. The wide Prusa ones fits perfectly above the LCD screen, whereas normal size rolls, one of them will fit to the right. Or if you get like, uh, what do I have up there right now? I've got the Polyalchemy Elixir. Those are narrow, narrow, yeah, narrow. I, I don't think I can speak right right now. Narrow rolls. So you can actually fit two of those in the same spot as you would one normal roll. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys will be able to enjoy that video as well. Uh, I'll be putting the links and stuff down in the video descriptions once everything is all set. So. Go ahead, hit the like button, hit the dislike button, leave a comment. Uh, let's become interactive. I would love to hear from you guys. Love to hear your ideas, your comments, your complaints. Just anything in general. Let's just go ahead and uh, start building it together. Alright, you guys take care. Have a good day. Uh, and look forward to more videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Uh, up over here somewhere. Um, wait, up over here somewhere, I'm going to have more video links, or the like button, and just, you know, around here. So click on whatever you like, and enjoy. Alright, I'll see you guys later.